everyone, it's Ceci. Thank you for coming back to the You Can Do STEM channel. Um, so today we're going to do something a little different and just talk about our path. So I'm going to talk about my individual path to when I started wanting to become a psychologist to where I am now, a graduate student in the experimental psychology program at Tufts University. So I knew what I wanted to do when I was in seventh grade, and that's because uh, I was in middle school, and during our time in middle school, there was this class called Humanities, and so basically it was just a combination of three class periods, so we were with the same teacher for three whole class periods. During that time, you had a lot of free time, because what are you going to plan to do for three class periods every day? So um, during my free time, I got onto one of our computers, and I just started, I don't know how I got there, but I just started reading um, the biographies of serial killers, and I just grew so fascinated. I just wanted to know why they wanted to kill, what drove them to kill people. Um, and so I wanted to see whether or not there was an actual occupation that allowed me to study serial killers. This happened within a three-hour period, okay? This actually happened. So I started looking at some occupations I could have, and I saw that you should study psychology if you wanted to study the minds of people. And so what I also found out is that you can't make a lot of money if you only have a bachelor's in psychology at all. Um, so then I found out that if I wanted to do what I wanted to do, I'd have to get my PhD. And so... I decided from that day on that I would work towards getting my PhD in psychology. So that was the day I found out that I wanted to be a psychologist. Um, and so from then on, um, I kind of stayed with this uh, want or desire to become a psychologist, clinical psychologist who worked with serial killers. Um, but then in freshman year of high school, one of my... Um, teachers. She was very supportive of my dream. We talked a lot. She was really, really cool. Um, and she bought me a book about one of the first forensic profilers um, of serial killers. So I was reading the book, and in the book it had this quote that I will never forget because obviously it's changed my path. And the quote says, it's by Nietzsche, it says, he who fights with monsters should be careful lest he thereby become a monster. And if thou gaze long into an abyss, the abyss will also gaze into thee. That really hit me, and I started thinking about my life. And I was like, could I really, you know, talk to serial killers about what they've done? And could I live with myself? And could I go to sleep knowing that I had these conversations with these individuals? So it really, really changed my mindset. And I was like wondering, you know, I really want to do psychology. I really love learning about the mind and about human behavior. And so it wasn't until um, my grandfather actually passed away and he had served in the military. And so during his uh, funeral, they draped over the American flag over his coffin. And that to me was just, I don't know, it was a beautiful moment. And so from then on, I kind of thought that one of the most honorable things an individual could do would be to serve their country. And so from that moment on, I really, really, really wanted to join the military and serve my country. Um, so then I was thinking maybe, you know, I'll go into the Air Force Academy um, and then I'll just kind of figure out what I want to do with the whole psychology thing. So I graduated a year early from high school, so I was 17 when I graduated, um, and then I wanted to join the military, and me and my parents had a conversation, and they said, you know what, we're not going to sign you over to go to the military. Since I was 17, they had to, if I wanted to join. And so they didn't, and so then I was like, you know what, what can I do? Like, what is my next step? And this was still when I was in high school, so, I mean, I had time to think about it. And so um, I ended up thinking, you know, what if I can serve my country in a different way? What if I can find a way to combine my love for psychology with my want to serve my country? And then I started hearing about post-traumatic stress disorder. And I was like, you know what? That's the perfect combination. I can study individuals who have PTSD 
and that'll be a way that I'm serving my country because I'm serving those who serve their country. And then I'm also doing what I love with psychology. I'm learning why individuals, why some um, who experience a trauma go on to develop PTSD and why others don't. So interesting to me. So then um, that was what I decided to do. I lived in El Paso, Texas, and there's the University of Texas at El Paso. Kind of always knew I was going to go there anyways. So then I applied, majored in psychology, and then it was just kind of, you know, it was kind of finishing my classes or taking classes to get to where I wanted to be. That's all I thought that it was until I became friends with one of the graduate students that was at the, in the psychology department. And she told me, you know, if you really want to get your PhD in psychology, you need to do research. And I was like, what? What's research? Like, what are you talking about? And so she told me that, um, yeah, you need to uh, gain research experience because one, you're going to find out whether or not you actually like the research you're conducting. Uh, or two, it gives you experience with skills that you'll need to apply to graduate school. So, I mean, as soon as she told me that, I immediately went to go look for uh, research opportunities that I could apply to um, to gain experience because I really, really wanted to get my PhD in psychology. And so uh, what I found was there were some summer internships. And so it was the spring semester of my freshman year of college. I saw some summer internships I could apply to and I applied to one. And uh, the one I applied to is the National Institute of Drug Abuse Summer Research Internship Program for Underrepresented Students. And so this one was perfect because the way you apply to it is that there's multiple sites that you can apply to. And luckily enough, there was a lab in the psychology department at UTEP that was looking for an individual to fill um, a research assistant position for the summer. Um, so I applied directly to that lab um, in the psychology department so I can, one, stay home because I'm telling you, my parents did not like the idea of me leaving, so I knew that wasn't going to be an option. And two, um, I can just stay, hopefully stay in that lab and continue conducting research if it was a good fit. And so thankfully I got accepted into that summer program and I started conducting research. Um, so the research I was conducting was behavioral neuroscience. And so it was on nicotine addiction in diabetic animal models. And so one thing, I never thought I'd be doing addiction research. And two, I never wanted to work with animals. But I applied to the program because I knew I needed experience. So first, you know, lesson to be made is that just gain experience. It doesn't matter if you don't like, you know, the research that you're conducting now. But as long as you put in that effort because you want that end product so bad and you want to go to graduate school so bad, do it because, you know, there's not, there wasn't a lot of PTSD. There was like almost no PTSD labs in the psychology department at UTEP. So I had to, I had to deal with doing research that I might not have found interesting. Um, but that's what you think also. Maybe you think that you won't find something interesting, but then when you're actually doing it, you fall in love with it. And so that also is kind of what happened. So I started, um, in the, uh, behavioral neuroscience lab studying nicotine addiction in animal models uh, of diabetes. And uh, luckily, the professor asked me to stay in her lab for the rest of my time at UTEP. So I was in a lab for the rest of my time, which is three and a half years, and it really made me kind of fall in love with neuroscience. Then it opened up this whole door that I never even knew existed until I volunteered in that lab. And so... Apart from that lab, I also was working in a second lab. It was a social and cognitive psychology laboratory. And so one of the graduate students was interested in PTSD because he was a veteran and he had the ability to kind of make his own study. So as soon as I heard that he wanted to do a study regarding PTSD symptomology, I was in. So I also joined uh, that lab and so I was with them for three years. So I was in two labs for a total of six and a half years, let's say. And so I knew I was ready to go to graduate school because I knew, one, what I wanted to do. I knew 
I wanted to work with individuals with PTSD. I knew I wanted to be a psychologist. But first, I thought I wanted to be a clinical psychologist, and this is where things kind of change. I applied for clinical psychology programs. Now, clinical psychology programs are one of the toughest, if not the toughest, programs to apply to. And I'll be real with you, if you want to be a clinical psychologist, you know, all for it, but you have to do what's called a research assistantship position in between the time you go to graduate school and the time you graduate from undergrad. And so basically what this entails is just being a lab manager for a lab anywhere in the country, wherever you choose, wherever accepts you, um, and just being a lab manager, you know, following up with participants, sitting in on clinical rotations, you know, uh, just gaining more research experience, analyzing data. And I didn't want to do that. Um, well, one, because I, I barely even heard that that's what you needed to do. I found that out when I was on clinical psych interviews. So I was a little late to the party. So um, I never, I didn't apply to those research assistantships because I didn't, one, didn't think I needed the extra experience since I was doing uh, research my whole tenure of undergrad. And two, um, I didn't know about them. So um, I applied to around 20 clinical psychology programs that were looking at PTSD interventions. And I applied to one experimental psych program that was using neuroimaging techniques to look at individuals with PTSD. And I just fell in love with their research because I was combining my newly found love for neuroscience with my love for PTSD research. And I was like, this is so perfect. It's the per most perfect program that I could ask for. So, um, but the other thing was that it was at Tufts. Now, I've never heard of Tufts before I applied, but then I was looking at um, their Wikipedia and it was a pretty prestigious school. So I was like, I shouldn't even, I literally told myself I shouldn't even apply because I'm not going to get accepted. And so my mentor, my undergraduate mentor told me, no, you need to apply. Like, this is a great opportunity and I think it would fit you so well. And so I ended up applying, ended up getting an interview and ended up here. Um, so I'm very thankful for my path because, you know, it all lined up in such a way that I can't even believe it. Um, and it's very surreal because I'm living my dream. Um, so I'm in my third year. I'll be done hopefully in two years. Um, and then I'll be doing what I love. But I do what I love every day. So, you know, I'm living the life. Um, but yeah, so that's my path. If you have any questions about anything that I said, I know there are a few things that we can touch upon in further detail, such as how to apply to research assistantship. I know in one of my next videos I'll be talking about financial aid resources, so I was lucky enough to get grants that paid for my undergraduate degree. Literally, I have no student loans, and that's because I, I was given the Pell Grant and the Texas Grant. We'll go more in those into those um, in further videos. Um, and also, I was being paid as a research assistant while I was an undergrad, so there was some undergraduate programs that were available to me at UTEP that actually paid for me to conduct research. So there may be some undergraduate um, institutions that don't have this. I know Tufts has a couple, but they're only like $500. Um, but I literally got paid every month to conduct research. So that's also something that you can look into uh, if you're you know, in high school and wanting to go into research and want to see whether or not there's actually those opportunities or programs for you to get paid while um, being an undergrad. So there's a lot of things that we can talk about. Um, so please let me know uh, what else you'd like me to discuss if there's anything that was a little unclear. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching.